My name is Mike Roizen. I'm the Chief Wellness Officer and Chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. We decided, our CEO did, about eight years ago, that it was not enough to have the traditional three-legged stool of an academic medical center that is great patient care, and the Cleveland Clinic's been number one in cardiovascular care for 18 years in a row by U.S. News and World Report, or research and education. You had to do more than those three if we were going to continue to lead. That is, our major problem in the United States is the influx of chronic disease, and unless we stop that influx, the U.S. standard of living, the U.S. competitiveness for jobs, the U.S. ability and our ability to survive as a society is threatened. So the only way we can, in fact, continue to lead, the only way the country can survive is if we stop the influx of chronic disease. The great news is four factors cause 75% of that influx. Tobacco use, physical inactivity, food choices and portion size, and unmanaged stress. Some would put sleep as a fifth, but, but those four are the major causes. If we deal with those, we make our country much more competitive. That is, why are we twice as expensive as Europe or Canada, four times as expensive as Mexico, India, China, and Japan? Because we have twice the chronic disease of Canada and Europe, four times that of the other countries. It's only if we get back to even in those levels that we can compete for jobs, that we can compete for a social standard, that we can compete on a standard of living. So it is that major an issue. We decided to use our 43,000 employees and their dependents as our test kitchen, if you will. Could we reduce the onset of chronic disease? Could we do so at a reasonable price? Could we get them to change behavior and sustain that change? And if so, could we take those lessons learned? What I'm going to talk about today is exactly those lessons that we've learned, how we actually have done what, in fact, the administration says has to be done, bend the cost curve down, and not only bend the cost curve down, but make people feel better about themselves. The data in the literature would say there are five food felons. If you avoid those five, you, in fact, change the way your proteins and your genes function. That is, each person gets a do-over. Hemoglobin A1C is just hemoglobin with a glucose attached to the A1C position. And the sugar you had for that transforms that hemoglobin to a less functional hemoglobin for 180 days. So you may enjoy the ice cream cone or the Coke or the soda or whatever you have for 10 minutes, but the pain, the change in your proteins lasts 180 days. With genes, it's not quite as long, but they're factories that make proteins. You turn them on, it takes a while to turn them off, and vice versa. So we get to change those with saturated fats and some other things. So the five food felons, things that turn into sugar quickly. Added sugars, added syrups, 900% whole grains. The other two food felons, trans fat and saturated fat. Four-legged animal fat, two-legged animal skin, palm and coconut oil. By transforming those, by avoiding those, and in fact, enjoying everything else, there's no reason you can't make great tasting food with other things, you get to prevent a large part of disease. Now, reversing disease may take more substantial changes because you've already got things and you need to pull plaque out. But that's basically the message is that if you avoid those five, you transform America to a great degree. Our own employees have changed a great deal. Do we, have we got that yet with our patients? No, but, we, but by some of the changes that I'll mention today, we're getting that spread out throughout our employee populations and throughout our caregivers and through the caregivers to patients. But one of the things you've got to do is transform the caregivers first. And most of us, you're an internist like myself, I'm both an anesthesiologist and an internist, but we weren't educated in that. Cardiology still has zero hours required, zero of nutrition. And if you'd asked me three years ago, three months ago even, when I ask our cardiologist, does diet matter? They would say, no, statins are all statins and blood pressure pills are all you need. Well, two key articles have come out in the last three months 
one in 30,000 people multi-center study, which showed that diet to the optimally managed person still made a 40% difference. And one just this past week that had essentially the same thing with comparing it to the typical Spanish diet, if you will. Not an ideal, but in fact, when they go to an ideal, they could even do it more. And you'd see the 60 or 70% change, I believe, compared to the typical Spanish diet. So I think we are getting there. It's hard for them to say it doesn't matter now. Um, so are we transforming our employees? Yeah, the employees have bought in and have changed and are changing behavior. Are, the, um, are our caregivers and clinicians and experts, the catheterization experts and the surgeons buying in? Progressively, but it hasn't happened yet.